this is it. The one everybody's been waiting for. The number one best and worst performing cartoon movies continuation of a cartoon series. It's been a long journey with a lot of ups and definitely a lot of downs, but it's come to this. So without further ado, let's do this thing. Before we get started, I publish content of questionable quality whenever. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button or subscribe anyway, I'm not picky. You can keep up with me on social media or ring that bell to be notified when a new video comes out. With that said, let's do this thing. The number one worst performing movie is GoBots Battle of the Rock Lords. Now I know I watched GoBots a little bit when I was a kid. I just don't remember anything about it outside of the names Leader One, Psykill, and Coptor. I didn't even remember that there were unnecessary humans in the series. By the way, why was the clown look in in the 1980s? Anyway, for those who don't know, The Rock Lords was a toy series that was part of the GoBots line of toys. My brother actually had three of these toys. While they weren't as good as playing with vehicles because, you know, they're rocks, they were still fun to fiddle with since they transformed. This movie was a decent three-part episode of GoBots. I'm not kidding with this. This was pretty much a classic Hanna-Barbera action cartoon from the 70s and 80s with limited animation and too much talking. And I'm ashamed to admit this, I fell asleep twice while watching this movie. That may or may not be because I stayed up to watch all nine hours of WrestleMania the night before. Nine hours, WWE. Nine hours of wrestling. But yeah, the Battle of the Rock Lords was boring, predictable, and had a lot of cutaways to characters' heads talking. And this was in theaters. They didn't even try to make it look theater worthy. However, there is an exception. And that is, it's some of the best backgrounds Hanna-Barbera had until... Maybe SWAT Cats? It's not a horrible movie. I mean, in this video countdown series alone, I can pick out six movies I hated more than this one. The story is your standard, let's get this group of heroes to help out this group of heroes. The old villains help the new villains. The old villains betray the new villains. We also get a 20 minute battle in the middle of the movie. 20 minutes. This was just a commercial to promote the GoBots new Rock Lords line of toys. It was also supposed to be a pilot for a Rock Lords series that never came out. By the way, why do human characters always get saddled with the most annoying characters no matter what series they're in? I hate Scooter. It's Frank Welker's child-friendly goof-off character voice. It's pretty much Slimer from Ghostbusters with good dialect. Now this is the number one worst performing. Why did this movie get buried? Well, first, it's the GoBots. I didn't think the series was popular enough to warrant a movie in the first place, considering Transformers outdid them every chance they got. Also, Transformers the movie was coming out in a few months. But what was this movie up against? On March 21st, 1996, GoBots Battle of the Rock Lords was up against Police Academy 3. That was not the problem. Although Police Academy 3 did better than the GoBots. No, the problem was two weeks before. That is when Care Bears the Movie 2 and the re-release of Disney Sleeping Beauty came out. You want to talk about an animation burnout? That would do it. Magmar is so confident of his superior strength that he's thrown caution to the wind. He doesn't know it, but once he's in this valley, he'll never get out. All right, let's take our positions. Honorable mention, My Little Pony the Movie 2017. So it's finally come to this, has it?
For a video series that was supposed to be finished by the time this movie even came out? This took a long time. A year. It took a freaking year. Anyway, being a longtime fan of the show, I have to look at this movie from three different perspectives. Fan of the show, occasional viewer of the show, new to the series, and knows very little of the show. You see, there's more to these movies than just catering to a built-in audience. Part of their job is to captivate a new audience, and when that audience is reluctant because it's My Little Pony or another franchise that outside people are leery about, the movie's job gets that much harder. So let's start with the viewpoint of a newbie. Is it too much for them to handle an hour and a half of My Little Pony? Not really. And that is because they limited the amount of cringe that comes from certain characters of the series. And when I say certain characters, I mean Pinkie Pie screaming at the top of her lungs. If you want to scare away new people to the series, well, the first trailer didn't make the best first impressions, did it? Why would you have Pinkie Pie screaming the very first thing in the movie trailer? Her screaming is her worst characteristic. Anyway, there's hardly any of Pinky's cringe in the movie, which is great. With that terrible first impression aside, the movie itself does a very good job of introducing the main six to a new audience. The interaction between them early on and the song We Got This does a great job of establishing who these characters are. Well, maybe not Fluttershy so much. It's a good start, and the story is good enough to keep a new audience hanging on and spark interest in the show. Now, for both of us who watch both this and the original movie, but have not dove into the Friendship is Magic series, we might have noticed a big problem between the two. They both have the same plot, and I'm not kidding when I say that. Both movies start with a party. Both have an evil villain who ruins the party and tries to take over the land. Both sets of ponies now have to find a group of McGruffin creatures to stop the evil. It's the same plot! The good news is, the 2017 movie does a better job of executing that plot. And when I say a better job, I mean no comic relief which is... No Grungles, no Unnecessary Humans, no Bushwillies, no Moon Chick, and no ponies that were not even established before the movie came out. Seriously, aside from Spike, the Bushwillies, Moon Chick, and Megan, who aren't even ponies, mind you, none of the characters were established before the original movie. This means we got to find out who these characters are during the film. And those characters sucked. Especially when you have a main character like Baby Lickety Split, who you wouldn't mind sending to the glue factory. But that is the advantage of the 2017 movie. After seven seasons, beat that Chuck, the main characters better be established for the movie. Each character was on point to their established development. And from the fans' perspective, the Easter eggs were fantastic. However, one of the downsides of the new movie is the celebrities. I understand the use of celebrities to get new people into the series. It's just, they're all easily replaceable. Well, most are anyway. Emily Blunt is excellent as Fizzled Pop Berry Twist. Seriously, I'm going to be calling Tempest Shadow that throughout the entire review. However... I'm pulling at strings here, but Grubber is useless, not funny and forgettable. The Storm King is, well, he was in the movie at times. Honestly, I don't see why the main villain could not have been just Fizzlepop. And also, I have to be honest, I'm into cartoons, so I didn't really know who any of these celebrities are before this movie. I did enjoy Ty Dig as Capper, and the Parrot Pirates were in the movie for a song. I did like the twist with the sea ponies. With the criticism that the celebrities weren't in the movie all that much, I do like that the new characters did not overshadow the established characters. With the exception of Fizzle Pop Fairy Twist. Yeah, the movie took most of the same ideas from the original movie, but made them better. With the exception of the smooths, Zilch can roadblock the smooths gotta throw away the atheosis. Nothing can stop the smooths. 
There we go. And if there is a sequel to this movie, they seriously cannot do another road movie again. So this movie is in the middle of the road. What happened? Honestly, 2017 happened. Yeah, this was a bad year for movies. Unless you're Marvel, Pixar, or Wonder Woman. I mean, look what we had. Blockbuster after blockbuster after blockbuster. But most of them are sequels or reboots. We kinda got burnt out. Even Blade Runner 2049 that came out the same weekend as My Little Pony did not meet box office expectations. But this movie had other problems as well. First, the Brony fandom is an online fandom. And a lot of them watches the TV show through streaming instead of on Discovery Family. Mind you, a lot of them don't have Discovery Family. So, when a digital copy of the movie was leaked online, well, we are an impatient society now, aren't we? You can guess what happened. The other problem is My Little Pony. A series that is designed to sell toys to little girls. And while yes, there is a group of older adults that enjoy the series just as much, we have to face the facts. It's a niche audience. And a lot of that audience has moved on. I mean, the show sucks in the ratings. Always has. But currently it's in its eighth season. And that is because of toy sales. So the show is doing what it's designed to do. And that is to sell toys because that is the only reason why we got eight plus seasons and a movie in the first place. That and Discovery Family will die without My Little Pony. None taken, especially since I wasn't raised in a barn. My family just happens to have a barn where I was born and spent most of my formative years. Raised in a barn. Look at you, with your scary broken horn and scowly eyes. What tricks do you know, my little holy woe? Not bad. So this countdown is following a list from the website Box Office Mojo. I'm going to be honest with you, this isn't the whole picture. There is another list of the same movies, but there is a very distinctive difference. And that is, for this list, I'm only going by how much money these movies made in America. The other list is the international list. There is, however, a little snag with that list. And that is, a lot of these movies didn't go international. Either that, or if they did, there is no record of profits from these movies. So let's take a look at what is the best and worst movies internationally. The ones in red did not go worldwide. So as you can see, half the movies on this list did not go worldwide. The bottom nine is the same, but Care Bears 2 is now number 10. The top 10 has the same movies, with the exception of a Goofy movie, which was overtaken by Shaun the Sheep. Again, a Goofy movie was not released overseas. And then again, the overseas profits for a Goofy movie was not recorded. That's a possibility. Beavis and Butthead to America, despite not having an international release, is still in the top 10. Wallace and Gromit shot up to number four. What can we say? They love those two overseas. The new My Little Pony movie went from the 17th best to the 14th. And, 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 hey now, you're an all-star. You're going to be fine. As you can see, the American side of things is only one part of the movie industry. And this whole part of the video is meant to give you a picture of how well these movies did around the world. Yet nothing could top the number one best performing. And what's crazy is if you add the revenue of the second and third best performing movies together, you still have $43 million short of what this movie took in. That is how popular the Simpson movie is. I just spoiled it, didn't I? Yeah, number one was the Simpson movie. Raise your hand if you're surprised. Well, crap. I just realized that isn't going to work because I can't see you. It's like that time when I knew John Cena broke into my house. 
I knew he was there, but I just couldn't see him. I wish I was sorry about that. I'm not, but I wish I was. Anyway, yeah, the Simpsons movie is on top of the list. It's also kind of the reason why I went with still frames for this series instead of actual movie footage. Because Fox tends to like to take down videos that features footage. So does Viacom, by the way. Thank goodness none of the shows on my History of Fox Kids video are actually owned by Fox. Anyway, getting back to the Simpsons movie, it took them 20 years from the Simpsons debut on the Tracy Ullman Show in 1987 to their first theatrical release in 2007. So, it's an achievement, I suppose. I remember being hyped for the movie when the trailers came out. I went to see it at my local drive-in movie theater. This was a great idea since I didn't have to hear all the idiots cheering whenever their favorite character was on screen. I wish I did that for Infinity Wars! Instead, I got stuck sitting in front of some guy trying to explain to his mom what was going on. Dude, you did not need to do that! The movie does that for you! Anyway, I saw the Simpsons movie in the drive-in, and after it was over, I forgot the whole thing. I remember parts! The dome, the polluted lake, parts ding-dong, and that is because I kept thinking, why are people making a fuss over this? Japan is laughing at you right now because Goku has beaten out Bart Simpson on that aspect for decades. But the main thing I remember the most from this movie is the pig. And that is because they showed it in nearly every commercial. Most of the main characters' character arcs, I forgot. But why is that? Is it because it's been so long since I've seen the movie? Maybe. But I've noticed something while watching the movie for a second time. We've already been through all this with The Simpsons. Not all at once, mind you, but we've all been through all this. Marge has left Homer before. Bart has had issues where he disowned Homer before. The town has turned against Homer before. Maggie almost killed someone before. And Lisa was a killjoy before. Seriously, what did she do other than point out the lake pollution? Oh, there's a boy she likes. It's amazing how he was not important to the plot at all. Oh yeah, we've seen that before too. But honestly, even though we've seen all of these before, I don't mind it because it's The Simpsons. Yeah, the movie was supposed to be bigger and better than the series, but the movie had a lot to live up to, and that is because a lot of The Simpsons' adventures are action-oriented. To me, the movie was just an hour and some change episode of the show that I paid for. I'm getting mad again! That second movie that I watched at the drive-in had better have been worth it! Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. You got lucky. Again, I like The Simpsons, but I still do get a good chuckle whenever I do watch it. The same can be said for the movie. I was never disappointed with the movie. I just forgot about it. But it did make $527,071,022 worldwide. Adjust that to 2017, and that is $623,000,000. $104,093. And this is the summer that Transformers, the fifth Harry Potter movie, Bratz, Rush Hour 3, wow, 2007 was a bad summer for movies. So who cares about everything I just said? There was still a big interest in The Simpsons in 2007. And no matter what, people still wanted to see The Simpsons movie back then. <laughs> This dome can play tricks on you. You just have to keep calm and... Oh my god! I'm out of the dome! Fresh air! Freedom! <laughs> All right, you. Lead good lives! Aww. It's once again time for everybody's favorite game that hardly anybody participates in. Caption that photo! 
It's where we take a still shot from one of the movies and we ask people to caption the photo. But first, let's take a look at some of the captions from the last video's photo. And now, it's time for this video's photo. Remember, you can go to my Twitter account, at Toonamp Reviews. There's a special post to go to, the link will be in the description, and you can caption the photo there. Hi, Toonamp! Yes? Is this just a trick to get you more followers on the Twitter? No... Why would you say that while I'm recording? Because I don't care much for you. Get out of my house, and stop eating my coffee! That is weird. Fine, but I'm taking this bologna sandwich that I brought here with me. Are you expecting an argument with me about that? I think it's time to move on. Right, right. Hey, Mr. Big TV Man, look a here. What do you want? Um, look what I can do with my phone. You want to know how I do it? Four generations of inbreeding? Oh. So that's it. That's the end of this video series. I know it took a little bit longer than I had planned to get this out, but I'm glad you stick around with it until the very end. It was fun to revisit a lot of these movies, and it was fun to see these movies for the very first time. So with that said, what is your favorite movie that I reviewed in this series? Let me know in the comments section. So I've already announced the replacement for this series, which is the history of Disney television animation. Look for the very first episode of that, in about four videos. Maybe more if I decide to do some filler stuff. With that said, I'm Toonamp, I'm Tuned Up, I'm glad you tuned in. This has been the Top 10 Animated Movies, continuation of an animated series. I'm glad I do not have to say that title again. It's time for me to tune out.